liftoff. You're watching Spaceflight Now's coverage of the launch of Atlantis. Manny Zuala. Zuala. You got it. It's one of my favorite places. I have such great memories of Michu. Oh, New Orleans, too. Louisiana, the place where the external tanks were, were made. Um, of course, that's all past tense now. Well, we're still making tanks. You still have one? Well, I have one. How many more in the stream? We have uh, four in stream. All right. Um, okay. And so we have one rebuilt. Yes. We're going to deliver the uh, ET-135 in December. Right. Just a few weeks from now. And then the uh, ET-136 is in final assembly. ET-137 is going to be spliced uh, in uh, a couple of days here. And then we'll be down to one tank, ET-138, and that's going to come together in cell A, which is where we put the lock center tank and the hydrogen tank together. And that's going to come together in either uh, December or January. Wow. And, uh, and, and those, the those are the three that's tanks that's that we'll be building. Wow. And uh, we'll deliver 136 in uh, February, 137 in May, and 138 in June. And then that'll be hey, the end of the line. Now, you were talking, uh, I remember we were talking about uh, some of the stuff at the Augustine Commission. Isn't there one extra tank? That's ET-122, one one yes. yeah, which it, we're refurbishing. And we, that tank, that, where, what was the story on that one? Well, that tank actually was sitting in cell A uh, at the time of the hurricane. Okay. And a piece of the roof, a corner of the, uh, the we have we also have a VAB in the, in the Michio, as you right. know. Uh -huh. And a piece of that roof yeah. fell in uh, and damaged the side of the tank. And so uh, we spent the last year and a half or so evaluating it, assessing it, and we've been given clearance now to go ahead and refurbish the tank. So that might be another status. mission? Is that, that, Augustine yes, recommended that, right? Wasn't that? Well, well, well was, I know you didn't set, make recommendations. It was set forward so as, a, as an option. Right. But that would, that would, if you got a tank. Yep, that's, that's right. A lot of it there. Yeah. Might want to do that. Right. All right, so you know, I, 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 have, I was so inspired by the folks at Michu. Uh, I, I arrived there by helicopter probably about a week after Katrina hit and met the most amazing people I've ever met. You know, I, I, you go to the space program, you meet people with passion, they, they, they have energy, they, they talk about their job. They, most of them would do it for free. You're the boss, right. I probably shouldn't tell you that. But <laughs> anyway, they, they really would. And, and then you, you meet these guys who kept this pump, this kind of older pump going in the midst of Katrina, which literally saved, saved that the plant. plant. Absolutely. And these guys all lost their houses, they had no idea what mm -hmm. was happening to their families, great personal sacrifice. The whole thing was amazing. That is, that to me is the essence of, uh, of a workforce you want to hang on to. There are true heroes. So what are we going to do about them when there's no more tanks to build? Well, we, we have been working on this flyout now, as you know, for the last couple of years. And um, we've been working hard to try to place those people either in the local community if they don't want to leave the area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have places for them in the corporation. You know, Lockheed Martin's right. 140,000 strong. Uh, for those that decided they want to stay within the corporation, we've offered them opportunities uh, around the corporation. And some of them have taken that. Um, and then some have personal plans. They, some of them just want to retire. Right. Some don't want to chill out. Right. It's very hard to get some of the actual metrics on the people who have left because if they leave our payroll, unless they call back to us and tell us what they're doing, we actually right. don't have a good way to track but, everybody. But what, upset, uh, what kind of worries me is, you know, this is, this is in, in my view, this is the essence of, of the space, space program. Guys that were literally willing to risk their lives instead of going home to their families right. to save Absolutely right. that facility. They are so committed yep. to, and, the, and, to the and, job. And w when we lose them, we lose something very valuable, I think. You lose, you lose their commitment, you lose their energy, and uh, you lose a lot of experience. And uh, they just know how to build a tank. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we continue to do, and which just really speaks of the character of the Mishu population, is that we have formed these teams called collaborative work cells. And they have instituted many, many process improvements so that each of these tanks that we produce, each one is better than the last. Uh, and they've stuck with it. And if you look at the way we produce these tanks, the quality has been getting better and better. They've been producing to their schedules even better and better. So their level of execution is just such a high level. I'm just so impressed by, by the workforce. So even as the shuttle program enters the twilight yes. months, they're still improving? They're still, they're still improving. They're still committed to it. They have such a laser focus on what they're doing. It, it's a sight to behold. So we're trying to take that message, actually, and try to spread it to the rest of the space. Uh, systems community and say, you know, we're doing some good things here that we'd like to be able to uh, replicate perhaps in some of our other, other facilities. So is there a place for Michoud, the facility, the workers in 
whatever's next? Uh, as you know, we're waiting to hear the administration's decision on the next heavy launch vehicle, the architecture for that. And uh, we're hoping that we have a role in that. Mishu is uh, probably the only location in the country where you can manufacture 27 and a half foot diameter, 33 foot diameter tanks. As you know, the Saturn I boosters mm -hmm. were made there. Right. The facility is sized for that. Uh, right now, there's construction in the facility. I don't know if you know about that. Uh, they're, they are actually digging up the uh, floor for foundations for the next generation friction stir welders that are going in. Um, we at Lockheed Martin are also building the Orion space, the structures for the Orion crew capsule and the service module uh, and using these large universal friction stir weld machines. They're actually doing the welding for those uh, ground test articles now. How's morale? Correct. Time. Well, it is excellent. I mean, what we've done is, well, we spent a lot of time obviously talking with the workforce, talking to the workforce, uh, getting our managers and leaders out there. We also have provided support for them. So what we've done is we've partnered with the state. There is a career transition center that sits across uh, the, the facility, um, and the state has uh, helped us with funding for training, uh, for counseling, uh, and any opportunities that they have to look for jobs uh, around the community. They're there for us. Uh, we also have internally in the company have uh, Tiger teams. What we've done is we've partnered with our HR professionals uh, in all the areas that they might need assistance in, whether it's resume writing, interviewing, uh, benefits, uh, financial planning. And we've also offered many types of skills, re-careering we call it. And so if they need to have uh, new certifications in weld technology, for instance, they can do that. And they have courses in um, the latest business programs so they have the ability to do that. Plus we have our own tuition refund program uh, for the corporation. So we bundled all this together and what we've done also is that over the past couple of years uh, as we close down the areas we know which areas we're going to close down. So all the employees actually know how, how long they have to work in the program and that's been beneficial for them because they're not wondering oh am I going to be the next to go, am I going to be you know, laid off next week. They actually know uh, when their time is up, and so they've used that to their advantage. All right, while, while we're all waiting for this decision for the administration as to what's next, uh, is Lockheed Martin able to march forward with Orion progress? Is yes, that, we are. Is, because is the thinking that one way or another Orion's going to be part of the mix? Well, we think Orion is going to be the vehicle of the future. Uh, I think it's a very flexible vehicle, um, and what we've done is also just completed the preliminary design review in flying colors, uh, and actually the, the uh, production, as you see it on the floor, a lot of the things that we're welding right now, you know, fit within the window of the schedule. So I think we're going to be in good shape in Orion. So Orion will not be the tall pole in the tent of the gap, it sounds like. At least I don't believe so. There may be other people who know better. I don't have oversight of the entire program, but from my vantage point, I think we're in good shape. Did, now, did you have an opportunity? Were you here for the 1X launch? Did you have an opportunity? Uh, well, I actually was here for the first day and it scrubbed and yeah. I had to leave town and it launched the following day, what, so what, what, I was sitting in the airplane when it actually lifted off. Hey, I was on the same <laughs> flight. I was on my, gosh, I was, yeah, I was yeah, literally yeah, at Orlando yeah, Airport yeah, watching it out west. the window. And I had <laughs> guys black, tweet, no, not tweeting, but sending yeah. me email with the status yeah, yeah. of the vehicle. What would you think of that? I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. You know, to see a new vehicle take off from the, the pad B is just an awesome sight. Yeah. And actually, you know, that's one of the things that we need to do, I think, a better job of as a whole community is to be able to inspire young people you know, get them interested in science and math and engineering. Because our, our workforce, I mean, that, that's what we build our future products on. And without those engineers, you know, we're not going to take too many great strides in this country. Well, as I said earlier, you may not care much about space, but you should care about that. Yes. Everybody should care about competitiveness, STEM, our nation's future in those technical realms. We don't grow enough of these people yes. here. And we need to do that. We That's absolutely need to do that. And, and space is all part of inspiring kids to do just that. Yep, so. you bet. But once again, I'm preaching to the choir. Hopefully absolutely. somebody's out there saying, you know what? Maybe Mr. Obama should bring Charlie Bolden, the NASA administrator, with him to China. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Start that right now. <laughs> That's right. All right. So I'm going to try one more time. Manny Zuoletta. Thank you. you very okay? good. You did very well. <laughs> with Michu. My, my all-time favorite NASA facility run by Lockheed Martin, the most yep. dedicated. Like I say, I, when I think about those guys telling me that story, yes. I, 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 every time, I'm, I'm getting old, <laughs> I guess. I, 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 cry, I cry schmaltzy movies, too. But this, that was the real thing. And those guys are the most amazing they guys. They are the real deal there. Pleasure. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Dan, thank Thanks, you, Lockheed Martin. Right. Thank uh, you very much. Appreciate that.